Hello and welcome to my lab. This is a $2,000 industrial HMI. HMI stands for Human Machine Interface, which means it's a glorified touchscreen for use with industrial machinery. And this is my $200 alternative. Pretty much the same thing. In fact, I think better in some ways, but uh, an order of magnitude less cost. I work as an industrial systems integrator, which is just a fancy way of saying that I build and modify industrial machinery. So I work with these quite a bit. And uh, this is a Red Lion, one of my, one of my go-to uh, because they, they talk to everything. And that's usually the issue with industrial machinery is just getting things to talk. Uh, but they're very expensive, and uh, the way I see it, you're not really, you're not really buying much for that because the IDE is its complete own custom thing, and I'm not a big fan. And maybe that's great for someone that doesn't know how to program, but I do. So I'd rather just you know use something like this, which runs um, C Sharp uh, .NET. We'll we'll get into more of what's going on here in a minute, but. Uh, what I'm getting at here in the lab is that uh, we're trying to find, you know, the same kind of functionality, but something that fits us better and uh, mostly fits our budget better. As an industrial systems integrator, I see that most of the equipment that I use on industrial machinery could probably be made for about a tenth of the cost if you know what you're doing. So that's what I hope to do here in the lab is uh, come up with little tools like this so that once we do get into building more advanced machinery, this will just be a tool in our pocket and we can slap it on a machine, program it, and be off just, just the way that these are meant to be. But uh, we're just going to try to develop this system and put that in our pocket. All right, here's the rig that we will be using to test everything with. And this is a demo rig that I inherited from a company that I build machines for. And uh, it's just, I mean, it looks like just a pile of stuff, but there is a point to it. Uh, right here, we've got a servo axis. Uh, this goes forward and backwards. And uh, there's a spring here. So there's a varying amount of force, you know, back force as you go forward, and a load cell. So this allows the drive over here to um, look at this load cell signal and evaluate how much force is going into everything. This in and of itself isn't really useful for anything, but it is a very good uh, demo just to play with. And I do often come back and, and just play with this thing. I have an interface in the Red Lion that we will look at first, and as a so so we have a point of comparison. We'll recreate a, another interface for this setup in our new HMI. So fundamentally, what this uh, little setup demo does is it will go forward looking for a certain amount of force, and you can just find that force, push to it, and then come back or you can find the force and try to hold that force uh, and it just cycles. That's, that's what I programmed it to do anyway. So the HMI's job is to just set up all those variables involved and command the machine to go. So let's uh, take a look at the Red Lion interface and then we'll continue from there. So here we can take a look at the uh, Red Lion and uh, you can see we've got a bunch of pages set up here and um, you, you, this isn't really representative of all that, all of what a Red Lion program would look like because you, you set what the buttons look like and the colors and stuff. So, so to some degree you're limited by your uh, artistic ability on this stuff. But uh, this is just, like I said, a uh, quick demo that I come back to frequently. Uh, so it's not very polished, but it's uh, completely functional. So HMIs are used to uh, set settings, uh, view the state of the machine. Um, sometimes it's used to jog the machine, depending on safety requirements and stuff. Uh, here you can see I can I can move the axis around like this, and you can give it commands. So you can see uh, if I switch over to a set points page, you've just got a giant page full of settings, and these values are actually in the drive I showed you earlier. So when I change uh, this value here to 30, oh, 30, then 
uh, and that's a speed setting. It'll actually go faster now because that, that value has changed in the drive. And that's the value of an HMI. It's really, it is just an interface for whatever controllers or drives or anything that you have on the system. So this here is specific to uh, this little demo rig, but I'll show you what the demo rig does. So we can just set a desired force here. We'll just say 40 pounds on the load cell. Uh, of course, the load cell isn't calibrated, so we don't really know what's on the load cell. Uh, this approach value does things. You'll see later. Now I can actually have the machine calibrate itself. And this is going to have the axis push forward until it finds that uh, force and then record the position of the force in a set point so that we can use that in the cycle. So there we go. It just slowly crept forward, found the force, recorded the position at which it found the force, and now you'll see it's in this little set point here, which the machine will use while it's cycling. So if I start cycle here, well, let's tell it to do 200 cycles. If I say start cycle here, it's just going to uh, approach that, where uh, approach, let's go back to settings, I'll show you. It'll approach this position from this far away and then keep going forward until it finds the, the 40 pounds we've told it to look for. And there it is, just cycling. And of course, being an industrial machine, it will do this until the end of time. As long as we tell it to go and continue. So I'll just tell it to stop at the end of this cycle. And there we go. So all we want to do is be able to replicate this functionality with our own hardware that is significantly cheaper. So let's go take a look at the hardware we uh, have for the other HMI. So looking at the hardware for our HMI here, it has this touchscreen, which is most of it. Uh, this just came off of Amazon and it was uh, about $100. And any touchscreen would do, really. I might not use this one in the future because it was a bit flimsy. Uh, I may have pinched this flex cable here and now that touch screen doesn't work so um, uh, I guess we'll be using a mouse for this demonstration anyway the computer is right here and this is this is a Qualcomm board it's a uh, dragon board is what they call it but it's a Qualcomm Snapdragon and uh, this was just 70 bucks and it's essentially a phone which is great so we have quite a bit of functionality here it has built-in graphics if we can figure out how to use it uh, maybe so you've got $70 in the board, uh, $100 in the touch screen, and then you know you just kind of add some for whatever enclosure you can imagine up, which you know maybe costs five, 50 bucks or something. And then you have your own little touch screen, and uh, you can you know it's got built-in Wi-Fi. I don't know if I'll use that or not. I can use a USB converter to Ethernet, which I. Uh, Still can't decide whether I like or not. Uh, it seems to be working so far, but using a USB as a permanent connection just feels wrong somehow. Maybe I, maybe I, there's nothing to that. So that's really all there is for the hardware. All the all the magic here is in the software. So we'll uh, we'll go take a look at that. On the Dragon board, we've installed Windows 10 IoT, and what that allows is for me to use the Universal Windows platform. It's quite handy because it's a little bit like Windows Forms, uh, which I used to use, so it's quite familiar, and that gives me an editor that I can edit the interface with, and then use .NET Core in the back end. So that gives us access to a bunch of libraries, and allows for a flexibility that is really incomparable to what you'd normally find in industrial HMIs. It should also be uh, faster to program as well, um, but the downside might be that it'll be difficult to get it to talk some protocols. The demo we're using uses Modbus, which was easy enough to get working, but we have yet to really try getting it working with other protocols. So we'll see how that goes. It's really as simple as that, which is my main reason for using this. I just wanted something very straightforward, quick, and flexible to use. So let's load up the app and see how well it controls our demo rig. Okay, so here's the setup with our HMI. 
and you can see we've got uh, the different pages that are necessary the usual start stop page and the manual page and uh, the interesting thing here is that uh, this is really responsive I mean you can't really see because I'm using the mouse here but it is very responsive and uh, that's obviously very important when you're on a machine so this works really well for jogging it back and forth all the same controls as we had before and now though we have this really sweet live chart which you probably can't see very well uh, so what I'm going to do is actually capture this on a computer because we can run this on a computer as well uh, because it's just a universal Windows platform so we can run this anywhere we want I'll just go ahead and start running cycles and we'll take a look at the live chart so you can do charts on the red line as well uh, but they definitely don't look nearly as good they don't update as quickly and they just don't look as good um, so it's doable, but I definitely wouldn't use it in an actual application. Not like this, anyway. So we've got all kinds of settings here we can play with. So Let's speed this up. We're going to speed the approach speed. And you'll see it uh, happen on the next cycle. Yep, there, now it's going faster. So there we go. It's uh, our own HMI at uh, a tenth the cost. And it's not a whole lot to look at right now, but there's a lot more potential in this thing. And uh, I look forward to using it in our machines in the future, including the next one in the next video that you'll be seeing. So that'll be cool. Um, but with all that said, we'll see you next time. Trustful. I trust no one. Oh.